Hey guys, welcome to, uh, first off, welcome to the outside. I thought today is actually really sunny and not too windy, so I thought I'd chance going outside. Uh, so welcome to the park. If you can see behind me, behind me, those are the tennis courts where I used to do a lot of my coaching. Um, and I still play there once a week. Uh, in today's episode, I think it's episode 17. Uh, now, in the Facebook group, which again, by the way, if you haven't joined it, make sure you do. Um, it is free to join, facebook.com forward slash groups forward slash the pageant boss. Uh, the link will be in this video or the show notes to the podcast. Um, Caitlin, I, I've been asking people what to, sort of topics they want me to cover. And Caitlin Nash, I think that's her name, asked about getting sponsorship. And this is something that has come up quite a few times. And I've addressed it kind of briefly, but... I want to dive into it a little bit more today. And I'm, look, I'm not going to say I have some formula to magically guarantee that you can, you know, do what I say and you get sponsorship. And by the way, I'm going to assume that you're talking about monetary sponsorship as in giving you cash or paying your entry fee, because I think that's the hardest one to secure versus in-kind sponsorship, which is my, they might give you products or something like that. So if we talk about monetary sponsorship for just a second, all I, the main thing I want you to remember is, as it was explained to me, a radio station, W-I-I-F-M. What's in it for me? Now, I bring this up because the main problem that you guys have when you write your sponsorship letters is that you talk about, not talk about what's in it for you necessarily, but you talk all about yourself, your advocacy, why you're passionate about it, etc. And you absolutely should do that. But you do need to address the main issue, which is what's in it for the sponsor. And with people's attention spans being the way that they are, you really want to address that as early on as you can in the email. So to give you an example, and I just checked through this uh, to see how I did it. Uh, back in, I think it was 2019, I was writing a book. And the idea of the book was that I was going to feature well, the most, some of the most empowering and impactful women in Australia in a photo slash interview book. So have you seen Confessions of a Pageant Queen, which I wrote, it was going to be like that, but it wasn't just going to be focused on pageant queens. And it was going to be a hardcover book with amazing full length photography. And for one reason or another, that's been put on the back burner. It's still in the works, but I was approaching some really, really big names for that. And these were people who have successful businesses, successful entrepreneurs, and I got many of them to say yes. Um, and when I say many, it's people that I never thought I really had the right to get on board. But there was one entrepreneur, for example, that I did have a friend help get in touch with, but she said yes. There was an Olympian in there. Uh, there was some, I think, uh, workout, like fitness celebrities. So these were probably big people and they agreed to be on board. Now, I approached them with an email. And this is the first thing you might want to consider is, should I maybe approach them via email versus direct messaging? I think when it comes to something like a sponsorship request, it's better to do it via email. Um, it just is a bit more professional. That being said, so I looked at my email, as I said, and I had to introduce quickly what I was doing. You can't just immediately go into, you know, what's in it for the person. So, but I, I try to keep it really brief. So I would say, hi, I would say something like, hi, hope you're going well. And then blah, I'm writing a book with the most empowering women in Australia in it. And I'd love you, love you to be involved. So in one sentence, in one fell swoop, I've covered what I, what it is I'm doing. So people, so the person reading it or the, in this case, sometimes a personal assistant reading it knows very clearly what it is I'm doing and what I'm asking for. So they know I'm writing a book and I'm asking XYZ person, XYZ celebrity to be in my book, right? Then you can tell a bit more of the backstory. So if you're on pageantry, you're going to tell a bit more about your advocacy or the system or things like that. But we really want to keep it to a minimum. Apologies if you hear a bit of wind noise. I didn't realize there was wind out here, but that's what happens when you shoot outdoors. So in one or two paragraphs, maybe three, you want to really briefly introduce yourself and concisely get to the point. Then I really need you to flip the switch 
and go into what's in it for me, as in what's in it for the person that you are addressing this email to. Now, in the email that I did, I wrote this in, I think it was a numbered format or a bullet point list, because very often people write really long emails with long sentences and it's very difficult um, to read and people just don't read it, basically. If you can put it in bullet point form, people are much more likely you're sort of guiding their eyes through the critical points and it makes your email seem more structured and shorter so people are much more likely to read through it so i need you if you're going to approach someone for monetary sponsorship to really put your thinking head on and ask yourself that question what's in it for them and here's the news the better you formulate those answers and the more thought you put into it the more success you are going to have. I cannot stress that enough. As someone who's run their own business for the better part of 20 years, the number of times I've been approached, even just with the pageant project, for people who want me to interview them. Now, I know that's not a sponsorship, but it takes a lot of my time, so it's pretty much the equivalent. They put no effort into saying what's in it for me, from my point of view. Um, sometimes they even exaggerate to say they love my stuff and they've been following me forever and then I look and they followed me literally two days ago. So don't lie, don't exaggerate. I'm hoping I don't have to say that. But they rarely take into account the fact that, well, they rarely address the question for me, which is what's in it for me? You want me to interview you? Okay, I get that. What's in it for me? Now you might think that's a bit of an odd request, like what's in it for the pageant project? Well, I'm trying to grow a business here as well, right? So if you want me to get you on an interview, and by the way, spend probably the two or three hours it takes to do the interview from beginning as to when I, you know, get you on, do the interview request, do the actual interview, edit it, clip it, etc., upload it. Don't you think that I would be much more likely to interview you if you took the time, A, to understand what I'm about? So people who go, oh, is this going to be a written interview? I'm like, well, you obviously have no idea what I'm about because I haven't done a written interview in 200 attempts. So try again. Um, and then the other thing is I'm trying to grow a business. So, you know, do you have a lot of followers? Um, do you have some track record of success? Or do you have some sort of interests that align with me? Now, forget me. Forget what I just said for a second. You go to these people, uh, these corporate types looking for sponsorship and the mistake I see again and again is you draft one letter, you copy paste it, you send it to 200 people, and if you're lucky, you get one response, right? If you're lucky, you'll get one person saying yes. What makes you think you have the right to get this money as sponsorship if you won't put in the effort to research what this person is about or this brand is about, this company is about? So W-I-I-F-M, that's my P said. You need to address that. And as I said, try and do it in bullet point form or numbered list form. So it's really clear to the person, oh, okay, this person actually has taken the time to say what's in it for me and point one, point two, point three, point four, And from there, you have a much better chance of at least getting a response email. Now, even if the response is a negative, that's still a positive in my mind because it gives you the opportunity to follow up. Maybe not this year, but you can at least say thanks and then you can approach them for next year. And very often they might say, hey, and this is something to consider. Very often big corporations allocate their sponsorship money at the beginning of the financial year. So the time at which the timing of your approach does matter sometimes. So if you're aware of that, the next time you go to a, a pageant and you want sponsorship, you know approximately when is a good time to approach these corporates. Where, and I don't know what the beginning of the financial year is for you, where you're watching. In Australia, it's July. So each financial year begins in July. So that would be a good time. If, that, if they're then, if the corporates are deciding where to spend their sponsorship money, because I will have a budget for it, that's when you want to get in touch, right? So what's in it for me? So in terms of what you can offer, and this is where I want you to do some really hard thinking yourself. Please don't be the lazy person and go, Adrian, just tell me what I should write and then I should get $100 million in sponsorship. No, it doesn't work like that and nor should it. So you might be able to offer them viewership numbers if you have a significant social media following or maybe if you don't have the world's biggest social following, it could be a very targeted social media following. So if, and this ties into targeting, 
as well. I don't think you should just be targeting every corporation under the sun. If you have an advocacy or you've built your social media around a certain advocacy and you can find a corporation or a business that has interests that are aligned with that advocacy, then it goes without saying that you should be approaching those corporations preferentially, right? I don't think you just you should just be copy pasting um, an approach email to every business that you can find under the sun because I can tell you from my perspective, it, it seems very obvious when someone's copy pasted something to me, even as an interview request, it just looks a bit wrong. So, okay, if you have a social media following, a giant one, great. If you have a targeted one that's aligned with their interests, even better. And then please be concrete about what it is you're going to offer them. So some people say, oh, I have a million followers. Okay, great. But what are you going to do? So are you going to do a, let's say a sponsored post once a week? Are you going to do three sponsored posts and five stories, right? I don't know what it is you're going to do, but I want you to put that in the actual what's in it for me because you could have a million followers. That doesn't, I don't know what that means you're going to do, right? And really just tagging sponsors is a bit lazy. So actually creating a post or creating a story where you tag the sponsors or do a sponsored shout out, that is going to put you ahead. There'll be, the people go, oh, okay, you've got this number of followers and you're going to give us a shout out. Okay. And then I think also... I'm riffing a little bit because really the what's in it for me, you need to address it. That's by far the most important thing. So do that, right? I promise you, if you do that, you're going to get better responses straight away. Um, but the other thing is be specific as to how much you want. Don't just say, I'm looking for money. Okay, here's a buck, get out of here, right? Say, I'm looking for $100. And say why my sponsorship fee that I require that my directorship requires in order to be part of this and be part of the community is XYZ amount of dollars. Um, and you could offer uh, different you could offer different tiers. So let's say you needed to raise two hundred and fifty dollars worth of sponsorship. Maybe you know diamond level or platinum level is two hundred and fifty dollars a whole thing, and they get more for that. Um, you could offer a tier at a hundred dollars and give a little bit less. Fifty dollars give a little bit less. So you've got the room definitely to be creative there. But this is why one of the reasons, <coughs> excuse me, you've heard me bang on and on about entrepreneurship and learning how to grow a business and why that might be really good for your uh, pageant career. Guess what? This is probably one of the most obvious ways because when you go to sell a product to the market, you really do need to ask first off what's in it for the consumer, but B, the pricing and the selling and the marketing, because really you're selling and marketing yourself. If you're asking for sponsorship, you've got to think about it this way. Okay. You're asking me to give you a hundred dollars, which means it's a hundred dollars less I could spend on advertising, on someone's salary, on my own grocery bill, frankly, or social media advertising. Um, and a lot of people don't realize how far social media advertising can go. So if I was to put a hundred dollars in social media advertising, let's say over a week, I could be reaching thousands of people, thousands of targeted people. So I just tell you that so you know what you're up against. Don't think, oh, if you ask someone for $100 and you have a million followers or 100,000 followers, that that will necessarily impress people. Because if they're smart, their advertising people, their social media advertising people will know, well, yeah, that sounds really great, but average engagement on social is about 1% or 2%, especially with larger audiences. And by the way, your demographics are probably... 80% the wrong people. So we're looking at 20% of your audience. So it's 20% times 1% of that. It's like, no, nah, it's monetarily not worth it. So you have to battle against that and you have to put yourself forward as a really good value proposition. And as I said, what's in it for me, align with corporations that have some, because what I just said about paid advertising, you go, well, that's really difficult to compete with. Yes, but you have different strengths so if you can find a corporation who really has interests that are aligned with yours then bring that to the table as well specifically state what it is you're going to do for them specifically ask what money what amount they you want or they can give to you and honestly if you do all those and you say look forward to hearing from you and then you do the follow-up please follow up. Don't think that you send one email and you haven't heard back in three or four days. It's a no. 
very often, and I've done this, and other people have done this too that I know, they will read your email and they'll go, okay, I'm not going to respond to it now. And then they forget about it because we're busy. Or, and here's a trick, they will say, okay, I'm not going to reply to this. And I'm going to see if they follow up. Because if they follow up, at least I know they're serious about it. If they just send me one email and then they never follow up, well, probably wasn't a person that was worth sponsoring in the first place because they haven't shown any dedication or commitment. So I hope that helps, Caitlin, and anyone else who's looking for advice as to how to get sponsorship. It's not easy, especially, as I said, if you're looking for money. But start by really thinking about, and this has been my first point and my major point, what's in it for me, W-I-I-F-M. So I would say go and brainstorm a list of at least 20 things 20 items of value in bullet point form that you can give to your prospective sponsor saying, this is what I offer you and try and make them really concrete. And measurable. Don't just say I have a million followers. Say I will do this number of posts or this number of stories for this amount of money. Um, and the reason I say brainstorm 20 is probably because out of the 20, 10, you'll go, yeah, these are probably okay. And then out of those, you might, if you're lucky, pull out three or four that are really, really on the money. And then obviously you lead with those. Um, one final thing. I've mentioned before on these podcasts, Fiverr, and I mentioned the example of Alexandra, I believe her last name is Fasulo, who does copywriting. Now, copywriting is writing that's designed to get the sale. If you were clever, what you could do, I'm not saying you have to do this, Go on to Fiverr. Now, there's a reason it's called Fiverr. It's because you, the gigs used to always cost $5. It's not quite the case here. But I would say if you're willing to spend $20, $50 I think would be a lot, $20, find someone good on Fiverr, reputable, which you can do by their star rating, and say, hey, I need a letter drafted to get monetary sponsorship. And they will have certain questions for you. Probably like, well, what is it that you're offering to them, right? What is it that you're offering to the potential sponsor? Then they will go away and they will draft that letter for you. And because they're copywriters, they will probably write a really, really sexy approach email that you and I could never dream of writing. And this is doubly important. If you fall in the I can't spell bucket, please don't write a crappy approach email that's full of spelling errors and then cry that you're just a bad speller or that you're dyslexic. Look, no hate. I get it. But when you're approaching people, if there's something that you're not good at, that's another challenge that you have to surmount. Don't give excuses, especially when you're asking for sponsorship. So that's a little hack for you. If you're not good at writing the email or the letter, if you don't have that gift, you can actually get it done for you for a really, really small amount of money. And you go, I don't have $20 to spend. Well... If you're asking for $100 in sponsorship, do you really not have $20 to spend? And if you really don't have that $20 to spend when you're asking for $100, I'm not sure that you're the sort of person that I want to work with. I'm just being brutally honest, right? My point is think outside the box and like everything else, if it was easy, everyone would be doing it. So if you want to stand out, you got to do what not many other people are doing, and I guarantee you. So think about what's in it for them, W-I-I-F-M, right? And then if you can align with their interests, target your corporations and your potential sponsors. Don't just blanket them. Try and find out when they're actually allocating sponsorship money, right? Because again, they tend to do it once a year. And if you miss out on that timing, they'll often say, yeah, I'd love to sponsor you, but we've used, we've allocated our budget is what they'll tell you. And then if you're really crap at writing emails, get someone else to do it. it. Won't cost you much. And it might get you that sponsorship that you're really, really after. And finally, follow up, right? Follow up pretty relentlessly. Um, set a schedule and, you know, follow up two or three times at least. And if they say no, then stop following up. But if you haven't heard back from them or they say, you know, so-and-so is out of the office, he'll get back, sounds good. He'll get back to you or she'll get back to you on this date. Follow up on that date if you haven't heard from them. Okay. So I really hope that helps. If you have any specific like approach emails or approach letters that you'd like me to have a quick look at, then um, 
guess you could email them to me or DM them to me. Please understand if you really want a comprehensive analysis, you are asking for my time. So please be ready to pay for that. But as I keep telling my coaching clients, look, if you've got like a one-off question to ask me, send it to me. I'm not one of those people who goes, oh, you're asking me one question. You've got to pay me money first. I'm not that person. My lawyer is that person. God, my lawyers charge like for phone calls. I'm like, geez, like if you're charging me for phone calls every, and they charge by like the minute sometimes or six minute blocks, I'm like, you know, you're charging me by the six minute block. Don't ask me how I am. Let's get straight to business, right? Um, so I hope that helps. Uh, if you have any specific questions on sponsorship or anything that I've just said, let me know and I'll speak to you in the next episode.